Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the city of Geldorf, where if you listen closely, you can hear the hammering of picks on stone as the gold ore is being extracted for our use. I am Marcus Aurelius, and this is Age of Wonders 3, a roleplay campaign where you, the viewer, get to make the decisions. And we're on turn 38. That is amazing to me. Like, I feel like we should still be in the early part of the game. We've gotten a really slow start, and that is explained by all of these huge groups of bandits that are running around, causing us a lot of trouble. And that is going to be our number one priority, is stamping those out and clearing this area so we can expand more safely. We haven't even met one of our neighbors yet. First off, I'd like to thank everyone for voting in the uh, noble positions. I do want to reiterate that these positions are for roleplay only, and they won't have any more of a say in council decisions as any other viewer. However, some people did remark that the way the voting took place unfairly favored people who put their hat into the ring early because they already established a lot of votes before other people could even say that they were interested in the position. And I totally understand that and I sympathize with that. Votes can be changed, like a YouTube comment can be edited, but I understand how once somebody commits himself to a person it's really difficult for them to then go back and say, actually, I changed my mind. So I think what we're going to do to make this right is I'm going to put in a whole bunch of new positions. And the way they're going to be determined is in this episode, in the comments of this episode, which is not going to be a council episode, anyone who is interested in one of these new positions can put a comment down in there saying, I'm interested in this position. And then what I'll do is I'll create a Google Doc that allows people to vote and I'll list all the nominees, and that will be in the next episode. So I'll actually provide a link to it in the comments of the next episode and in the description, because I'm obviously going to film the episode right now, right after this one. And then, finally, once the vote takes place, the next week when I record the third episode from this one, I will announce the winners. And you can, of course, look at the votes yourself. They'll be able to view. So I think that's a fair way to do it. But I will right now announce the winners of the first round. And I don't want to take anything away from them. Uh, a lot of them gave really good in-character reasons why they should have been chosen for the positions. And I thought it was a lot of fun. Especially Trip Fields, who is the best campaigner I think I have ever seen. He was all over the place commenting on people's threads, telling people to vote for him, offering a deals to certain people like i'll vote for you if you vote for me he was really campaigning hard and he is our winner of master of soldiers so congratulations trip fields i hope you defend aurelia with the same level of passion and commitment that you ran for this position next we have our pontifex maximus kionon and i just want to say kionon that as Pontifex Maximus, you will represent all of the varied religions of Aurelia. So I certainly hope you take that to heart and don't favor unreasonably one religion over another. A uh, religion that I think we should be paying a little bit more attention to is apparently the city of Geldorf was built over a shrine to an ancient undead god, Necros, Lord of the Undead. And that is the reason why Geldorf is being constantly attacked by undead forces. So Kionon, I think it would probably be beneficial for us to appease Necros as best we can so that we can continue to grow our empire. I'd also like to congratulate Izvor, our chief ranger. Izvor, I hope you will keep the boundaries of Aurelia clear of vermin. The mayor of Aurelia, Nicholas Roberts. It's a very important position because Nicholas will be in charge of determining how city life takes place in our capital, maybe righting the wrongs that our citizens commit against one another, and being the capital, he will also be in residence whenever Frigoberto is in his tower. The mayor of Geldorf is Brian McClure, and that's a very important position because Brian will be responsible for ensuring that the gold that is being generated at Geldorf is able to be distributed and is put to good use. Finally, the Minister of Magic will be John Dead, and John Dead will be responsible for ensuring that the study of mana and the usage of it, the storage of it, etc., is handled in the safest way possible. Now, as for new positions that are going to be opening up, and again, if you're interested in one of these new positions, please write so below in the comments, we're going to have the Master of Coin, who will handle the economy of Aurelia and make sure that the uh, economy is just 
going smoothly. Make sure commerce is happening. He's going to promote activities that will promote the growth of our economy. We're going to have a chief researcher who is going to work under our Minister of Magic, John Dead, to ensure that our mana is utilized adequately for the purposes of research and that any tomes and papers and whatnot that we discover are stored safely in the vaults of Aurelia. Finally, we are going to have, not finally, we have a couple more. We're going to have the Master of Ships, who is going to be in charge of our Navy, working under our Master of Soldiers, Trip Fields. And also under Trip Fields, we're going to have our Master of Horse, who will be responsible not only for the training of our cavalry and knights, but also ensuring that we have a plentiful supply of war horses with which to, uh, for them to mount. And finally, we have the Envoy to the Underwater Domain of Lashanti, who are now are not allies are we allies or are we just friends not entirely sure but that's up for this person to find out it's going to be a difficult position because obviously lashanti is underwater and humans are not really designed for that so it's going to require a lot of magical resources to allow our envoy to live comfortably under the sea but if you're interested in that difficult position by all means nominate yourself down below with regards to our standard council voting we had two choices that were offered. There was where we should go in terms of research and whether or not we should accept this new hero. It was close, but by a score of 10 to 7, we are going to reject this level 5 Dreadnought and try to get another kind of hero. Also, with regards to research, and this was incredibly close, folks, the winner was Last Stand. And that only takes two turns to research, so I think that's pretty good. The, um, Second place tie went to Expansionism and Resurrect Hero. So we're going to go with those next if they happen before another Council episode. So again, I'd like to thank everyone who participated. And those of you who are now nobles of the Empire of Aurelia, I hope that you will utilize your position in your comments and in your role-playing. And I will, of course, do my best to reference you whenever necessary in uh, my tale of this narrative. So moving along... We still have one more turn of the Shooting Stars. I really wanted Frigoberto to head up to the northeast and secure this area, maybe found another city, clear all these resources, but we simply can't do that right now because Geldorf is under constant attack and we have to, we have to make sure it's safe. So our first step is to clear out the brigands and the bandits as we see them, and our second step is to take care of these two sources of them. Once they're gone, I think we'll be safe enough to expand peaceably. We are getting a very slow start, and I think before they get too strong and are able to cause us some real pain, we need to uh, do our best to stop them. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move Frigoberto and Satura down here to take on this roving band of brigands. You can see our Berserkers for the first time. They look pretty impressive. Although it's interesting that they wear heavy armor on their legs and their arms and their groin, but they don't have any armor whatsoever on their chest, which seems like a, a bad idea. But hey, what do I know? So as brigands, these units aren't very tough, but they do have this annoying ranged attack. Wait, did the halflings just get lucky? Or did my troops who got hit by the halflings get lucky? I'm not quite sure how that went down. Anyway, Frigoberto, what kind of magic do you have? Or Satura? Smite sounds good. And these guys look like something that needs smiting. Oh, they did resist it, though. Satura gained a level, however. That was nice. Alright, what's the plan? I think the plan is just to charge. Send the Berserkers out. Okay, very good. Swords Masters. Can't make it quite to the front. Our Archers, let's see. No, unfortunately they are going to have to... Well, they're not going to be able to do much, unfortunately. They can't attack these guys. But they only get one shot. We have our cavalry, so we have a couple choices. We could wade right into it and try to take these guys out. Let's see, we get 7 to 10, and they have 20. 
What if Rigoberto charged them? Still 7 to 10. Because they have 60% physical protection. Hmm. They are lesser Shadow Stalkers. I would hate to see the greater ones. But since we've committed our Berserkers, we have to pretty much commit everyone. So. That's what we're going to do. Unfortunately, one survived, but that is what it is. Swordsmasters are going to stay. I wonder what the Frostlings are doing here in the desert. So, as we've proven, our Berserkers are not really good against arrow fire. Holy moly. Those lesser Shadowstalkers nearly took out Frigoberto. Alright. Let's get Satura up here. Okay, they're not supposed to be getting lucky. I have a mod that stops that. Oh, you know, this could be the shooting stars, though. It might not be the... Uh them being halflings. Alright, they've been taken out. So that means Frigoberto now has the ability to flee. And really, our Berserkers need to get the heck out of here, too. What would be the best way to position my cavalry just to protect them? I guess we can go after these guys. They are they're crippled? Really? Really? Well, our cavalry is pretty strong, though. They're holding up. Berserkers just need to protect themselves. Wow. They rocked Satura. They have bad morale, luckily for us. Alright. Archers? Let's see if we can take... No, we can't. Shoot. Alright, so what's the plan? I guess our Swordsmasters can move up here. And then Satura can hit these guys. All right. Cavalry will finish him off. So now we just have these guys. Really? They resisted it? Low morale? Frostling brigands resisted? Oh, boy. Well, that wasted Frigoberto's turn. We're going to lose the... Berserkers. I won't see how we how they survive. Yeah. I should have just had Frigoberto attack. Of course we wanna have lost him too. Little bastard. Alright, so we lost the Berserkers, but everyone else. Seems to be okay. Still, though. We're going to reinforce the army with these three units. Alright. Meanwhile, we are going to produce more. Oh, and Satura has leveled up. What do we want for Satura? Spellcasting, resistance, aura, resistance, touch of faith, and chaplain. 
Paladin, resistance, melee attacks, better damage. Ironheart, cure disease, and sacred arms. Denounce Heretech is fine, but we don't have any devout units, I don't think. Paragon, righteous strength, strong will. The unit meditates in preparation for each battle and randomly receives one of the following. Two fire melee strength, two magic melee strength, I guess, or two holy melee strength, three magic melee strength. Oh, no, that's regular melee. Hmm. I think range strength would suit her pretty well. None of these are really any good. Monk, I guess, is okay. It does unlock more spells for us, which we do need. So would Divine Channeling. I guess we'll make her a monk. Those new spells might be useful. And, oh, really? Hit points cost two points now. Wow. I guess we're just going to leave that. Okay, these guys are going to stay here for right now. And that's all we've got. Yeah, you're going to stay here. Okay, I'm actually going to have our mermaids go off on their own because they're a lot faster. So they can explore more and more quickly. Tigran Sun Guards. I feel like even the random enemies in this game are way stronger than our empire. That's probably why we haven't seen any other empires. Maybe the random enemies have destroyed them all. Meanwhile, our... Like, I feel like we don't even really need these guys in the water. They could just join our troops on land. I guess they'd be useful if we have to fight any naval engagements, but... All right. And... It looks like the Shooting Stars event is over, and now we've got a much warmer color palette for our empire. Lashanti has a quest available. They want us to defeat more people. I just... I want to. They'll become our vassal. They'll give us a baby kraken and a siren. I would love all those things, but... We're just not in a position right now to send a big navy out there. So we're going to... What happens if we decline? Anything? No. I'm sorry. We're just going to have to decline that Lashanti. We're just not a naval power right now, and we've got problems of our own. All right. So what are we going to do here? Wait, we have a, a hero join offer. Let's see. Oh, cool. A level 5 rogue. Absolutely, we'll take you. Preston Garvey. What can he do? All units in the hero's army gain devout slayer, causing them to deal plus three against devout. Sprint in combat. Attempts to taunt enemy unit. They don't obey orders, but instead they attempt to attack the nearest enemy unit. Allows the hero's army to gain forest concealment. Doesn't seem very useful. Shadow blade. One defense. And its melee attacks deal one damage. First strike, projectile resistance, and stronger than steel. Mastermind. Spellcasting. Break control. Inflict crippling wounds and counter poison. Cloak and dagger. Better spellcasting. Let's just take... Hmm. Let's take all three of them. Unless something else comes up that seems awesome. Melee and ranged attacks can cause the target to be crippled. Actually, that seems pretty worthwhile. Okay, so we can get that. And with what's left, we can give... Oh, projectile resistance, yes. Alright, Preston. Isn't Preston Garvey... The name of the guy in Fallout 4? Feels that way, but I don't know. Alright, he's gonna hang out here with Gaspard. And we produced our last Monster Hunter. Well, we just need a lot more troops in general. So the Berserkers were good. They just didn't do very well against the ranged attacks. But they're still better than the... 
Yeah, they're still better at defense than the long swordsmen. Well, they're equal at least, but they have more. They have more hit points. We're just gonna get three berserkers and three more monster hunters. Let's fill out the queue there. Gildorf has produced a shrine, and we need to focus on their defense. So we're gonna well, two turns for a barracks, huh? Whereas the baths would make people happy and will grow the area better. We could just load it up with Civic Guard. There'll at least be troops that can take a hit and fill up the garrison. Just for now. Might be useful. That way our big troops can go out. Our heroes can go out. But if we wait two turns, we can start producing archers. And yeah, we're going to do that. Gildorf has grown into a village, which is great. Aurelia has grown into a city, which is great as well. And we have our mermaid. What's this down here? Another lost library? Uh-oh, I see borders of something here. The Dwelling of Druze. Independent, population, giants, pure good. Their relation is respectful and neutral. Hail, great Frigobert of Aurelia. Wow, I mean, we're just barely exploring this area, and these guys already know who we are. Frigoberto's an important fella. We are honored with your visit. I want to negotiate. Would you be interested in open borders in a peace treaty? I absolutely would. All right, we're now at peace with Drews. Let's take a look at them. Well, next turn, we'll take a look at them. They appear to not be an underwater place, though. They are on land, it appears. Let me know when you're ready to talk. Although, if you offer us any quests, we're not going to be able to take them because we're so far away from you. All right. So what's the plan here? Are we ready to move out against these places? We have two full armies. Figuberto. Take a monster hunter. You two can go over here. I guess we can split up our heroes. Anya. Okay. And Figuberto. Let's keep everyone together. Although technically, if they attack Figuberto, like from here, I think they're only fighting these two armies. They're not going to fight Anya's army. I think that's how that works. Anyway. We're going to leave our... We're just going to take a risk here and move some more troops over. Most of the enemies that have been spawning have not been spawning near Aurelia. So I think the people of Aurelia feel pretty safe. And they don't necessarily mind seeing their troops leave. Whereas Geldorf is constantly under attack. It just seems like a wise move to make. Yeah, you're going to stay where you are until you get more troops. You too. You guys can stay here. Oh, cool. We'll have our, our sailors here. Well, Shanti can discuss alliance proposal. We would be honored to be a vassal in your great empire for 255 gold. That's pretty much all the gold that we have. What would happen if they were our vassals? They'd give us gold, mana, knowledge. We'll grant vision and casting in their domains. You'll receive a portion of their income and trade, and you'll be able to demand tribute. And units, yes. Frigoberto did not have time to negotiate with the council on this one, but considering the council was overwhelmingly supportive of us building relationships with these guys, I'm sure the council will have no problem with them being our vassal and doing our bidding. Are these our mermaids? No. Oh, it's just, it's just showing us what their troops are doing. I see. All right, we forged an alliance. We are no longer alone in this world. And we have a berserker, that's great. We've researched Last Stand, so let's go with the next one. The next two, as I mentioned, were Expansionism and Resurrect Hero. Since Resurrect Hero takes nine turns, however, might be a good idea to focus on Expansionism. 
All right. So these guys will join Anya. As will these guys. And not a moment too soon, as it appears that there is another army of bandits bearing down on us. Only five of them. Yeah, poor Ignatius has pretty crappy troops. I think he's going to have to stay behind and protect the city of Geldor for right now, anyway. I don't want to send Frigoberto off on his own, though, because there might be other enemies that we don't see lurking in the lurking in the background. They might come against him. So we're just going to all hang out here until next turn where two armies can move out together. Anya's got a very interesting mixed force here. The, the Mariner only has normal morale, but all the humans have good morale. Alright, let's take a look at Drews. Neato. It's kind of like this giant city of giants. Alright, cool. We'll work peace with them, I think. Ooh, treasure. Oh, and there's some of the gold back that we spent making an alliance or a vassaling the, uh, the merfolk. So we're doing pretty well, ladies and gentlemen. So once again, I just want to remind you that in the comments of this episode, if you're interested in one of these positions, I'll repeat them. The Master of Coin, the Chief Researcher, the Master of Ships, the Master of Horse... The Envoy to Lashanti, and I guess now we also need an Envoy to Druze. So if you're interested in any of those six positions, nominate yourself down in the comments, and in the next episode, I will provide a link to a site where people can vote. It'll probably be a Google Doc, so only people who are signed in with Google can vote. But if you're commenting on a YouTube video, you are signed in with Google, so that should be fine. And that's that. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Marcus Aurelius. I'd like to thank you very much for watching. Have a good one.